Fantasy Football Show for Owen TV. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and today you'll notice uh, Joe is out of the building. He went on vacation. He's in Texas, I believe. I don't know exactly where he went, to be honest. Um, but with me is my wife, Marie. Hello. And, and there's a uh, specific reason that she's here today, and we'll get into that right away. Um, but welcome into the show. I just wanted to uh, ask how your fantasy football season's going, how... What's your experience level? Because we've had ranging guests from Drake and Tracy that have never played fantasy football uh, to Malik that has played but never really pays attention until maybe this year. Um, where do you fall on the fantasy football spectrum? So everybody knows. Well, I like to say that I am an avid fantasy football player. Um, my very first year playing, I won and came home with a championship. So about four years of experience, and I do – Enjoy it. I like it. I think I'm good at it. I'm probably not actually good at it. But uh, I think my team's doing pretty good this year, so I'll uh, take it. I also think you forget to mention who was there at the draft night when, the year that you won. Um, the, To be determined, Joey. Why? There was a lot of people. There well, was my siblings, their yeah, friends. But you, didn't you play one year prior to that, though? No, that was our first year. Oh, I thought you guys played one more year. Anyway. I was at that draft, and I helped her draft her team a little bit, and I helped set some lineups and make some pickups late, late in the season. Uh, so just, you know, to my own horn a little bit. Uh, but anyway, um, you, you're you in two leagues with me. We play in this Yahoo League, and we have an ESPN League, um, and you're doing pretty good in both of them. And I will say I've been pretty hands-off this year more than any other year with the draft, with players, a little bit with pickups here and there, but... You've done most of it on your own, and you've done pretty well. So I will give you that. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm good, but I pick based off of names I know, who I like, and then I just hope for the best. Yeah. Okay, so moving right into the matchups this week, um, and the reason that you're on the show, scored the most points in the league this week, and we also got Tracy to lose her first game. Uh, you won 145.22. To 106.6. Uh, Tracy, she had admitted defeat before the week started, which is a little disappointing um, that she had such negativity towards her team. Um, but she did have a lot of buys going on. She had some injury issues to deal with. Um, but beyond all of that, her team just did not play very well. Jared Goff looked awful against Baltimore. It was a terrible day to be a Lions fan. Um, I know you watched that entire game. I did. Yep. Didn't take a nap or anything. Yeah. She was around, didn't watch. Um, so she was technically there. Um, but Monday night, last night, your guy, Kirk Cousins, came up pretty big. He put up 21 points um, against the 49ers, and Minnesota pulled off the upset. Um, the late swap that you had to pull was putting Cortland Sutton in for DK Metcalf, who was injured with a hip injury. Um, so he was had... Uh, he was a late addition, and you chose correctly with Cortland Sutton. You didn't really have too many other good options, per se, but uh, it worked out in your favor. And you started off the week strong with Alvin Kamara getting 29 points, and he's been really good basically ever since uh, he's come back from his suspension. And then, of course, the star of your team, the Travis Swift himself. Stop. <laughs> 35.9 points. He had 12 catches for for 179 yards and a touchdown. He was on pace at one point to set a tight end record um, in a game, but uh, they kind of slowed down late in the game, and he didn't have to do too much. Um, on the other side, Tracy got some decent points from TJ Hawkinson, 19.6 on Monday night, but it wasn't enough. And Rashi Rice, Kansas City's uh, rookie wide receiver, had a touchdown, five catches, 60 yards. Um and then her defense gave her 16 points, so that was okay. Um, but Tracy's down. Uh, she finally realized what fantasy football is really about. You can't win every week. You cannot, and I will definitely take that dub for sure. Um, that also moves you into fourth place. You're four and three, which uh, we'll show at the end that basically all of the teams are fairly close in standings. The standings just keep getting closer now, especially with uh, Tracy finally losing. Nobody... Nobody is that far ahead. 
Um, Tracy's team going forward is going to be a little bit banged up still, um, but she will get all, all most of her players back because there's no buys this week. Um, so she'll hopefully bounce back, and then uh, you'll get Derrick Henry back, and hopefully DK Metcalf if, if he's healthy. So we'll see going forward. Um, the second matchup, uh, second highest scoring, is uh, Malik's last place team, which uh, he keeps saying that he's going to change his team name, and he hasn't done it. So I'll have to I'll have to talk to him tomorrow. Uh, but he took down Ian's team, one forty five point two to one eleven, and Malik getting production from Josh Allen, Travis Etienne, and the crazy part was his kicker, Dustin Hopkins, uh, scored twenty two points for him. Uh, I know that was a late week pickup that Malik had to make, and he was texting me throughout that game because Dustin Hopkins had like uh, four or five kicks, I think. Let me look real quick. 22 points as a kicker is insane. Yeah, it doesn't happen too often. Yeah, so he had four kicks, and three of them were from 50-plus. Uh, so each each of those 50-yarders are five points apiece. Um, and you don't get that too often with kickers, but I always tell Joe that like a kicker sometimes can make a week because you just get so much extra points uh, from that position, which nobody really ever does. Uh, it's kind of wild. Um, other than that, Malik's team still kind of just trudging along. I think they're a dangerous team. Like I, I think I say that every week. Um, and if they get on a roll, his team's going to be scary to uh, face. And then on the other side, Ian's team, uh, the Chargers is kind of what his team goes by. And Austin Eckler and Justin Herbert didn't have very good games. And uh, Chargers just struggled against Kansas City, who's showing that they have actually a pretty good defense. Um, They're not as fun offensively um, this year, necessarily. And then Devontae Smith still struggling for the Eagles. It seems like A.J. Brown this year is just getting everything for the Eagles. Um, So, yeah. It's it was a it was a rough week for Ian once again, even though he came back uh, with all his players healthy this week, where he hasn't had that in a couple weeks. So he still, I think, has a chance to do something, but a uh, disappointing week, I would say. Amon Ross St. Brown for him looked pretty good, even though Detroit did not look good. Yeah, so Amon Ross St. Brown was interesting. Um, he's part of the reason I lost in my big league, actually, this week. Uh, he got a lot of dump offs at the end of the game, which was annoying. Um, in our other league, he also gets a a bonus for when he goes over a hundred points. So, the end of that Lions game, even though they're getting blown out, and then Amonra Brown Amonra starts getting more catches, it just made it all the worse because, yeah, it, it was not fun. But yeah, uh, Amonra St. Brown has been fantastic for fantasy every week. Um, I think he's a top eight wide receiver right now on the season. Um, the third highest score was Sammy, the green Buckeye beaten up on Drake's wasteland wanderers who, oh boy, Drake had to like make a lot of moves. Uh, he had a lot of injuries, a lot of buys that he had to deal with. And, uh, luckily he did make the attempt. I had to text him, uh, Sunday morning to change, make some changes to his lineup. And he did so, which is cool that he didn't have an empty lineup per se, but it was a, it was a very, very rough outing for him. Uh, he had the Detroit defense, minus two. That's never fun. And uh, didn't get too much production out of any of his stars, like Josh Jacobs or anything like that. And then, like I said, the rest of his guys were basically injured or on by. And then Sammy just kept producing from uh, Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown. Like I said, those two have been insane this year. I have them in my ESPN league, and they've kind of kept me afloat. A.J. Brown is tearing it up this year. I think he's top five wide receiver right now. Um, Michael Pittman had 16 points with basically a last second touchdown. He got a 75 yard touchdown at the end of that game, um, to give him some quality points, even though Sammy didn't really need it. Uh, Saquon Barkley, after being back, uh, last week, uh, came back this week again and had a pretty solid outing. He got to the end zone, which always helps. And Dallas Goddard has basically taken over Devonte Smith's spot in that offense. Sammy could have put even more points up on the board, but Keenan Allen, uh, struggled this week, uh, kind of surprisingly. But like I said, the Chargers offense just in general um, was struggling for the most part. And, you know, normally we would look at the bench and see if Drake left anybody there. But like I said, again, there was no, there was nothing there. Uh, so he was in trouble basically this entire week, which is unfortunate. Um, and then we get to my matchup. 
I beat Becky 120.46 to 112.84. And I kind of got lucky, I think, this week. Uh, not playing any of those other top scores. Scoring was weird this week. There was a lot of uh, down scoring, but if you were um, one of the few teams that scored a lot, it was above and beyond. There was no like distinction this week of like in between. It was either you scored a lot of points or you scored a little points. And my matchup with Becky, I would say, is the one that was the most kind of at an average to say. Um, I got nothing from my quarterback once again. Um, Normally, I'd been playing Joe Burrow. He was on bye, so I went to Geno Smith with a good matchup against Arizona, but he just did not look that good. Cooper Cup played weird. I, I don't. I didn't see what happened in that game, but he didn't get a lot of catches, but luckily, Puka Nakua did, um, which I was hoping for when I played both Rams wide receivers. Uh, Jonathan Taylor came back and looked really good. He had a, a rushing touchdown against Cleveland. Mark Andrews, again, the Lions got smacked. And he had two touchdowns on the Lions, uh, which ended up helping me out a lot. And then Christian McCaffrey actually played on Monday night, which was huge. That was the part that made me the most nervous. I was, I think I was down 10 points or something going into Monday night. What would have been? It would have been like 14 points I was down because he scored 22. I was at 120. You were nervous either way. Yes, yes. Exactly. Uh, I was not sure if he was going to play, and if he didn't play, I didn't really have a backup plan that I could have gone to uh, that I know of. I, there might have been Elijah Mitchell that I could have maybe played, um, but that would have been risky. And again, I, I say it every week, luckily for me, Becky lives or dies by the Dolphins and Tua and Tyreek Hill. Now, Tyreek Hill had a pretty solid game. Didn't get the yardage necessarily, but he got 11 catches and a touchdown. But Tua only had one touchdown, one interception, and only 216 yards. So he didn't do a whole lot, uh, which definitely helps me out. Um, DeAndre Swift also on Sunday night didn't do as good as he has been in the last couple weeks. And Becky had to go to some some alternatives for the bye week. She had to play A.J. Dillon, who actually turned out to be a, a nice play for the most part. Uh, she also had the Baltimore defense, which, again, smacked the Lions around. And that was disappointing. But Becky just kind of didn't have a big week, which is always nice. She could have uh, played Mike Evans, who was on her bench. Would have given her a nice boost. Um, maybe she could have played Evans over Drake London. But I know Drake London had been playing pretty decently the last couple weeks. And then, of course, she has Lamar Jackson on her bench. And I say this every single week. It seems like... She has a problem of, like, you don't want to sit Tua because the Dolphins' offense is so crazy. And then you also have a really good quarterback in Lamar, so you don't know who to play or when to play them. She's basically stuck with Tua. Um, but after the way Lamar played against the Lions, he she, she might either have to try to trade somebody or just hold them on to him, I guess. But then you're only getting that good quarterback for one week during the other one's bye week. And to me, that's not always worth it, so... I don't know. It's it's a it's a tough call either way. Lamar would have been a great call this week, though. Yeah, it definitely would have been. Um, Unless the Lions played like they had been playing. Yeah, and, and that's what I mean. It, like it's hard to it's hard to predict that kind of thing because Miami was playing Philadelphia, who's normally a good defense as well. Uh, so I don't know who I would have played. Like I said in my big league, I sat Lamar Jackson because I was hoping there would be good juju. Uh, <laughs> that if you know mistakes if i mistakes didn't play him the lions would play well but that's not the case i should have just played him and so my thinking going forward now is i'm going to play the star quarterback against the lions because if the lions win and he does bad that's fine because the lions won and if he does good and the lions lose then i guess it's okay because my fantasy team won that's my that's my rule of thought going forward because if i have to play a backup like I did, then it's just disappointing all around because the Lions lost and my fantasy team lost. So maybe I've had it backwards all this time. I'm not sure. Um, and then finally, the last matchup of the week, we have the Hollywood Blockbusters, who won, and he's not even here. Maybe that's Joe's calling. He just can't show up on the fantasy show, um, and his team will do good. Playing against Jordan's team, my brother, and he's kind of – Jordan's had the same problem that I have of just – 
trying to figure out what to do with the quarterback position, never getting too many points. Uh, I know Joe, Joe's a big Matthew Stafford guy, but uh, he's just not playing all that great. One, he's just not getting a lot of touchdowns, um, and that's been hurting him in general. But he's doing his Matthew Stafford thing and uh, throwing a pick basically every game. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just been a struggle. Uh, Jordan has been able to sit on Stephon Diggs, who, funny enough, each one of us have in a league. You have Stephon Diggs in ESPN. I have Stephon Diggs in my big league, um, and he's just been rock solid all season long. He had a crazy touchdown this week where he almost got tackled, um, and he fought out of, like, two people, um, made it into the end zone. And then Jordan just kind of struggled not getting any touchdowns from anybody. Uh, Chris Olave had a decent game, seven catches, 57 yards, no touchdown. Ken Walker, 105 yards, two catches, no touchdown. Ramondre Stevenson, six catches, 51 yards for a running back is really good, no touchdown. Michael Mayer for the Vegas Raiders, uh, he had a really good game last week, but he's a rookie, so you never know what you're going to get week to week. And then Jalen Waddell, six catches, 63 yards, another solid outing, no touchdown. Um, and when you don't get touchdowns, it's hard to win games, unfortunately, in fantasy football. Um, and most of his bench basically did the same thing. So changing anybody out doesn't really do anything. Um, and then on the other side, Joe, he has been talking about benching Patrick Mahomes for weeks now. Well, he should. It's Patrick Mahomes. Uh, well, he shouldn't have. And luckily, <laughs> he didn't this week. Patrick Mahomes went off this week, scoring 33.86 points, 424 passing yards, four touchdowns. And 29 rushing yards. I guess I'm not going to get Patrick Mahomes from Joe anymore. I was hoping that I could figure out a trade to get Patrick Mahomes to my team, but... Not going to happen. He had an unbelievable week. I hope that uh, Joe now realizes this is why you you stick with Patrick Mahomes even when he's struggling. Um, I, I can't believe he was thinking about playing Brock Purdy. Um, so he got the big week from Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Jacoby Myers had a good game. Uh, he's basically been solid all season long. 18 points. Uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown pedestrian game and Bijan Robinson the oddest play of the week for fantasy managers if anybody that checks Twitter while fantasy games are going on or Sunday football Bijan Robinson supposedly had some sort of illness nobody knows exactly what it was he it's been reported that it was headaches the problem with all that is Atlanta is supposed to they're supposed to tell the league that he has an illness of some sort or some injury, you're supposed to report all that stuff. So a lot of people think that at some point the Falcons are going to be fined uh, because they did not report this injury. And so he ended up being on the active roster, but he barely played. He had three rushing yards and then just sat on the sidelines most of the game. So that was pretty frustrating. But luckily, uh, Jameer Gibbs for the Lions, similar to Monroe St. Brown. He, I think he had six catches on the last like couple drives of the Lions when they were down 32 points, uh, so he had six catches for 68 yards, and he did get his first touchdown of his rookie season, uh, so he scored 27 points, which was great. And then on Monday night, uh, another rookie, Jordan Addison, scored 31, 123 uh, catch, uh, receiving yards, excuse me, and two touchdowns. Uh, so he finally got something solid out of um, his rookie wide receiver. So the rookie's doing pretty good besides Bijan for Joe, um, and it was just a solid outing all around. Um, okay, that's all the matchups from last week. So as usual, we're going to go to some waiver wire pickups if anybody uh, needs anybody. Again, as I always say, we're in a 10-team league, so most of the time you're going to have a lot of the, the big-name people that you know other fantasy outlets will talk about. Josh Downs, if you're in need of a wide receiver, has been really solid uh, with Indianapolis since Gardner Minshew has been starting. Um, Romeo Dobbs of Green Bay, another solid, good wide receiver, and he may be back to the number one role because Christian Watson has a knee injury and nobody knows exactly what that is at the moment. Uh, so pay attention throughout the week because uh, he may be out at some point. Um, and then on the running back side, we have Gus Edwards who tore up the Lions. Um, actually, he didn't do that good. He had one catch for 80 yards that kind of gave him uh, his fantasy week. Um, I think we also have uh, Daryl Henderson and Royce Freeman possibly available in our league. I can't remember exactly. Let me uh, search this around. Uh, 
Yeah, running back is pretty available. Basically anybody that you want. Gus Edwards is a solid option. Uh, Justice Hill is another one. Ty J Spears, backup for Derrick Henry. There's been rumors that Derrick Henry may be traded at some point. Uh, Deontay Foreman of Chicago, he played really good last week. He had three touchdowns. He's probably going to get one more week of being the starting running back. Roshan Johnson is their rookie backup, uh, but he was in concussion protocol for the last two weeks. So he may be back this week. So they might split, but he could be a good option. Another one, Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt uh, may take over for Jerome Ford as Jerome Ford had, I believe, an ankle injury um, last week against Indianapolis. So Kareem Hunt might be the lead running back uh, for this following week. We'll have to wait and see on that too. Um, but yeah, if the LA Ram running backs are available, those are other good options. Daryl Henderson and Royce Freeman. So looking forward to week eight, we have myself, the humongous Melonheads, taking on Drake's Wasteland Wanderers. I don't want to jinx it and say this is a free win, but I'm going to jinx it and say that this is a free win to make things interesting. Uh, again, Drake's team... Uh, they will be healthy. He should get C.J. Stroud back this week because uh, their bye week is over. But right now I'm projected 129.06, and Drake is projected 93.53. But I know he doesn't have all his starters in at the moment. Um, and then we have Malik's last place team taking on my brother's team. And right now it's a pretty close matchup. Jordan is projected four points higher at the moment. And... I think they're going to have to put some of their starters back in. I know at least Malik is. He's going to get Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb back, um, which will be pretty big, of course, as those are two of his top guys. So that should swing the projection uh, the other direction. And Jordan will get Brees Hall most likely to be his starter. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> it's hard to say. I don't know what he's going to do. But he has options. And then, let's see, Tracy is taking on Sammy's team. So she's got back-to-back -to -back tough matchups. Sammy right now has 126 projected points. I think he basically has his starting lineup in. Maybe he swaps out his tight ends. Dallas Goddard and Darren Waller both been playing well lately, so hard to say what he'll do there. And then Tracy's going to have to make some, some tough decisions, as she has been uh, these last couple weeks. Um, but she'll get to put her Dallas defense maybe back in. But Cleveland's pretty solid, too. So she'll have some decisions to make, and uh, it might it might be a tough week for her yet again, which means I could be knocking on the door for first place sooner rather than later. And then, Marie, you're up against Ian's team, and right now you are projected to lose. Yeah, that's gonna, we're going to change that. I'm, I'm going to win. Um, and Ian's projected 117, you're 111. Um, maybe DK Metcalf is going to be back. You will get D Derek Henry back, um, which is perfect because, like I said, Jerome Ford is hurt and he's trending in the wrong direction at the moment. Um, and then you'll have to make a little bit of a decision maybe at your flex position. You have Amari Cooper there right now um, who could be good, um, but you also have Gabe Davis against Tampa Bay. There's uh, Alexander Madison's kind of a wash at this point. Um, but yeah. And then you just kind of, kind of got to hope that Ian's team continues to struggle as they have, because he's always been projected a lot each week and hasn't really lived up to it. And I think that's something that Yahoo has been known to do. They, uh, they keep pr their projections pretty high for the most part. I do have to say I've been projected to lose every week heading mm -hmm. into these games, and I have managed to pull it out. So I'm hoping for another win this week. Yeah, and I mean, like we said, too, at the very beginning of the season, Tracy's team had an F after the draft. So you can only take projections so far to know what's going to happen. Um, but both of your teams are pretty scary at times. So it should be a good matchup, I would think, going into it. And then the final matchup. Oh, Joe's playing... Becky, so another staff matchup. Joe taking on Becky, and she's projected 118 points, and Joe is at 96 right now. But he has Zach Ertz, who is going to the IR, which I did not even know about, actually. Um, and then Brett Maher. Oh, my gosh, did he get dropped? Wow. Okay, so that's something that I just learned about that I'll need to 
pay attention to in my big league. Brett Maher has been released by the Rams because he missed two kicks this week, and he's been inconsistent, which stinks because he's one of the big legs in uh, fantasy, so he can kick 50s pretty often, but last week he did not look good. And basically, it was another reason that I lost in my big league this week. So Joe's going to have to replace a kicker, which is always no fun whatsoever because who cares about kickers? And then he's going to make some lineup decisions. He's got Damian Pierce coming off of a bye, which I don't think is going to make his lineup unless he's worried about the Bijan Robinson experience that he had last week. Sometimes there's PTSD involved in these things. Um, and then Becky, once again, she has to decide, does she want to play Tua and Tyreek against New England who have a sneaky defense and for some reason play the Dolphins really well? Or if she can go to Lamar after he had a huge game and played Arizona. Um, so she'll have some some lineup decisions to make. And uh, should be should be interesting. Um, that's uh, all the matchups and all the recap. Do you have anything else you would like to add? Uh, I would like to add that my team is going to win this week. And uh, hopefully you will lose. Wow. That's uh, rude. I wish you the best and uh, hope that you have a good fantasy week, as I do to everyone and always. Um, <laughs> uh, if you look at the, uh, actually, let's look at the standings really quick. So if we look at the standings, Tracy is still in first, like I said, six and one. I sit at five and two, so I'm in clear second place now. And then we have a whole load of people at four and three and three and four. Uh, Sammy, you, and then Ian. And then at three and four, we have Becky, Jordan, and Joe. And then Malik is right behind those guys. So Malik is not out of it anymore. Drake, you're almost out of it, buddy. I hate to say it, but you're almost out of it. Um, Malik is knocking on the door. So those people at the bottom six, seven, and eight spots, they're going to need some wins. Otherwise, Malik's going to catch them and kick one of them out of the playoffs. As you can see, Malik has the most points scored in the league at 923. And that's... Pretty far and beyond the next closest, who is me at 886. Then we have Tracy at 885, and then Becky at 884, which is wild. We're all within two points of each other. Which means even if you do win, there is a chance that you are not in first. And if Tracy loses, it's all going to come down to your guys' points. Yeah, that's true. Like, if she scores more points than me and loses, which doesn't always happen, but it can, um, then yes, she would be ahead of me. Um so that'll be interesting to see. But like I said, Malik, he's got a tiebreaker for anybody that he beats because he's uh, so far ahead in points, which is interesting. And it it looks like it could come down to something like that. So everybody make sure that uh, you hit the waiver wire if you need it. Set your lineups, Drake. And uh, good luck in week eight. And we will see you guys next week. Thank you, Maria, for joining me. And... Uh, Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I fully believe it, but anyway, uh, this has been the Owen TV Fantasy Football League, and we will see you next week with Joe being back. <laughs>